Hey, Jay, how's it going? Good, Patrick. How are you? Well, you know, getting back Better. in the swing, of, back in the swing of things, right? There you go. Cool. Still doing the Zoom for the meeting. Yes. Yeah. Well, maybe one, maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, someday. <clears throat> I remember the days when people were <laughs> hated having to drive in, and now they want to drive in. <laughs> Please let us meet together. Let us meet in person. Cool. Well, we got a new commissioner, a new chair. Looks like some new, uh, some new blood on the staff, on the on the team. That's cool. I'm sure you're keeping busy. Do you do? Do you work in planning as well? No, no. I'm no? a com community and economic development. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, gosh, who was the old economic development guy way back in the 2000s? Um, John Raymond, right? Yeah, John Raymond. Oh, I love John. I think he went to Florida, maybe, right? Or Texas? I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, John was a cool guy. I liked him. I think he's in I, Carson. Oh, wow. In, a in fact, spot. I, remember, I remember going on one of our public, uh, public arts um, sponsored outings for the uh, seniors at Palm Springs High with, uh, to the Getty in LA and his son was uh, um, in high school then. So I, I actually rode next to him and we talked the whole way. They were big, um, they were big Doctor Who fans. And so he was to totally, they were totally nerded out on Doctor Who. I think we have a <laughs> quorum, Jay. So looks let's- Looks like start. it, Tracy. Yeah, let's get started. Sure. Um, so welcome everybody. Uh, hopefully uh, Russell will meet us. Uh, so welcome to the Palm Springs Public Arts Commission meeting of September, Wednesday, September 15th, 2021. Um, pursuant to uh, this executive order, the meeting will be conducted by teleconference. There will be no in-person access to the meeting. Um, do we have any public comment, Jay? Uh, no, uh, we do not have. Okay, so uh, so let's do our roll call, and then hopefully Russell will join us. I am oh, here. Russell's uh, yeah, here. Russell's here. Okay, yeah. So we're all here. Okay, uh, Commissioner Fevo. Here. Thank you, Commissioner Newkirk. Here. Thank you, Commissioner Armstrong. Here. Commissioner Demiani. Here. Thank you. Commissioner Lesniak. Okay, showing not here yet. Uh, Vice Chair Pritchard. Here. Chair Merrigan. Here. Yes, we do have a quorum, Madam Chair. Yay, and thank you, everybody. So can I ask for a... Um, Acceptance of the agenda. Does anybody want to uh, make any changes or, or are we good to... Um... We did receive uh, a comment on the... Oh, I'm sorry. That's not on the agenda. Sorry, Madam Chair. Okay. Oh, okay. Madam Chair, if I may, I either need some time under your item F, your remarks from the chair or somewhere else in the meeting? Sure. So yeah, what, to discuss the mural? Uh, no, I just have something to announce. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so whenever you want, that's totally let's, awesome. Let's do it under F then. Okay. All right, then I would move to accept the agenda as written. And do we have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. I didn't catch the second. Was that Commissioner Armstrong? That was Thank me. Thank you. Okay. So now is the time uh, set aside for members of the public to address the Public Arts Commission on items of general, general interest within subject matter jurisdiction of the commission and agenda items if the member of the public cannot be present later in the meeting at the time the item is heard by the commission. 
Additionally, members of the public may address the commission on each item listed on the posted agenda at the time each item is heard. Although the Public Arts Commission values your comments pursuant to the Brown Act, generally cannot take any action on items not listed on the posted agenda. Five minutes are assigned to each speaker. So do we have any public comments? I have not received any requests for public comments. Okay, great. So then we'll move to the approval of the minutes. The date is wrong on that though. They're the minutes from um, May 19th, not June 16th. So did anyone else see anything else on that? <clears throat> I did. I was not present for that meeting. So I asked Jay to take my name off. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure who was, uh, that was another question. So some people here in the meetings, it says they're, they were there, but you can let us know if you weren't there. So the, the, the minutes that were sent were from the May meeting, not for the June meeting, because I didn't notice the date was incorrect. I looked through the minutes and saw nothing out of, or, out of order. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering about the people. I didn't, if they were, if that was correct. Well, if it was May, it would be the old commissioners. Yeah, it's definitely not June 16th. It's May, oh. yeah, it's I didn't May, that. May 19th. Okay. okay, I'm very sorry, Madam Chair. I, I um. I believe we've already approved the May 19th. I will double check what went out and um, get uh, the correct minutes to everyone else uh, for, for the next meeting. Gary, do you remember what meeting you were at? Because a whole bunch of you guys were at that meeting. Yeah, it was the one right before it. And then uh, the meeting that this was just of the, the notes uh, was right after my interview. So it was the July 21st meeting. No, this this no. definitely was the May meeting. It wasn't the June meeting. No. Is, is that when the AIDS Memorial was presented? Yeah. Was okay. Yeah. Okay. So I think the people, the also present is incorrect as well. Yeah. Like I think they're from, like Gary said, they're from the April meeting. So it's kind of a mishmash of meetings. <laughs> And Jay, at the very, very bottom, my name is misspelled. Okay. Thank yeah, you did it the Ellis Island way, and we changed it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but the other, the the book, you know, the meat, um, I didn't see any edits. So should we just skip the approval of the minutes until we have specific yeah. corrections on who was there and who was not and Etc. and the date? Uh, yes, in this case, I would recommend um, skipping the approval until next meeting uh, as opposed to approving as amended. Right. Okay, great. Thank you. <clears throat> so, F, um, so we've had this remarks from the chair from the past few years. And it always has been extremely long. And I don't want to keep people forever at meetings. I'd, I'd rather have us just get to the nitty gritty and have other, you know, have everybody be able to um, participate. So I think I'm, I'm gonna keep it in for the meetings because it's one way of kind of um, wrapping up stuff maybe that couldn't get on the agenda, like we could, talk about it as it's, you know, a category remarks from the chair um, and kind of use it to, you know, give notice about upcoming things and, you know, give tips and stuff like that, maybe from Russell and I on things that you guys don't know about. Um, so that, uh, so I, I just have a, a, a few things that I, you know, we originally talked about this, the purpose of this meeting. So I wanna thank you all, I'm in Brazil and um, because of COVID, uh, 
this trip has changed radically and we were not able to plan anything. And where I was last week, they, they couldn't guarantee me having any Wi-Fi. So I was like way out in the countryside. And, and um, I always work in Brazil and it's so funny. We, I've never had the, the we haven't had a, this much problem with, with internet service and phone service in like a decade. So uh, other than that, um, so I thank you for your patience on that. Um, so the original meeting, we were going to have a chat on the ordinance changes so we could get them on the city council agenda um, and, and hopefully have the city council approve them. And then that would free liberate us to a degree um, from the constraints and straitjacket from last year. So, um, so in the meantime, uh, the city council sent out this matrix to all the departments and the commissions and they want us to spend time talking about what we want our purpose for the year to be and you know, maybe uh, put some goals in and then we're going to send that to the city council and um, they'll use that to like um, kind of evaluate us for the year and then we can use that to self-evaluate us and it's actually i think a good thing to then put on this matrix like hey we want to change the city ordinance but it's a conversation with everybody so they said originally if we um you know, we can start the conversation tonight and we can have another meeting to finish it, to hand it in. So one thing I, in it, I propose, and maybe at the end of the meeting things will change, but um, because we have this matrix, matrix thing now too that we need to discuss is if we, if we, um, get the nitty gritty done tonight and then maybe we meet we have a special meeting to finish this matrix and do um like spitball back and forth things for the coming year so that meeting could either be next week so we did that back to back or if you guys aren't into that we could have it the next week and then another way of looking at it is we could have you know, in the past, we kind of used these special meetings to kind of get things started. So we could have a few meetings in a row just to kind of line up projects and things we want to do. So we kind of pre-flight um, them and, and have like, you know, by mid-October, have like a bunch of things in the can that we want to do and then, you know, then go to meet once a month. So, so that's something to think about what you guys, how you guys feel about that. And then, um, and then, okay, so we're gonna talk about the changes to the ordinance, talk about the mural ordinance. And if you guys are, since this is now a meeting with, we, with the ability to vote, we can vote on that tonight if we want to uh, with whatever we want to go ahead with, which would be great, actually. Um, and then I had put on the agenda if we um, want to do subcommittees. We didn't really, we've had them in the past. Um, the city is, is stricter on them now because a subcommittee needs to be noticed to the public and there has to be minutes and so um, if we want to do subcommittees again, that's something that we, you know, everybody has to think about, like how much time they want to devote to that. And then, or we can kind of do what we were doing last year. We have these projects and someone helps uh, someone on a project. So, um, so I'm going to kind of list some projects. And then if you guys just send me an email and tell me what you're interested in. So we don't have to do it, you know, you just send an email, say, hey, I'd like to work on this project, on this project, and then we'll figure out how we, um, 
you know, put people in uh, projects that they're interested in. Um, and then Russell had um, an, uh, an update on a mural that we did uh, that he might want to talk about in our projects proposal. Um, so a few of the projects that we have going, it, it won't be, this won't be the whole list, but Shonda has been working on her stop in the name of love project. So, um, and we can all, I'll, we can also ask Jay to send out an email on this and then you guys just send me individually what you're interested in. So, um, it's nice if Shonda, we can ask Shonda herself if she wants help, but it's, it's always nice to have someone uh, help on a project. So Shonda has her stop in the name of love. We have a project that um, it's a maintenance project. So we, part of what we're supposed to do is the Public Arts Commission is maintain our collection, which we basically started doing or restarted after many years, we started, um, I don't know, maybe two years ago, a year and a half ago. So we have a couple contracts on that. Uh, so that's maintenance. Um, I was working on that last year. Um, and then we have, I'm doing maintenance slash art roster. So we also have a project to um, identify all of our public art. Uh, and that also is a contract. Um, another project we have is the museum. Uh, last year, because of COVID, we bas basically the, and because they've had so many people leave the museum, um, that project kind of uh, went by the wayside for last year. Like they didn't have any staff, staff ability to do any public programming, even if it was online with us. So uh, they just uh, told us they didn't have that ability. So um, I'd love to start that back up again. And we always want um, programming with the museum um, to be part of our public outreach since we give them, uh, we have been giving them $50,000 a year from the Public Arts Commission. And with that, they're supposed to offer the public a certain amount of um, uh, public art programming with the Public Arts Commission. So, um, and with that program, um, they have the free admission on Thursday night. So that's basically what the money pays for. And then when we do programming with them, it's usually on uh, Thursday night during their free, free uh, open hours. Um, so we also have social media. So that um, is a project that I'm uh, that we can we also need help on. So if you're interested in that, send me an email. And then we've been doing uh, temporary art. So I added this uh, as maybe something that we um, you know always want to work on. Russell's kind of always been working on it since he's been on the commission. Um, but, you know, we've had a lot of success with it. So it's really valuable, I think. Um, and then another item that we can talk about during the, the round table kind of part is our neighborhood grant program. Now, some of the emails that we've gotten um, were, would have been paid for last year under this neighborhood grant program slash CARES program. We kind of did two at the same time last year because of COVID. So one thing we can talk about is um, if we would like to renew that program for another year, because of COVID, we couldn't, um, we had just launched the program with the neighborhood um, uh, PS1 uh, uh, group and we had launched it with, with uh, the business community and then COVID hit. So, you know, we had the brochures out, the marketing started and then everything went, uh, everything closed down for a number of months. So then we converted that neighborhood grant program because no one could meet in person and you really, and PS1 wasn't meeting and um, 
you know, the whole idea behind the neighborhood grant was to have the community work together on it. So it just did not work during, during COVID last year. So we turned it into this kind of business uh, community artist response to the economic shutdown CARES program and um, used it more as a way of hiring artists and doing things. Um, it was mo mostly for the business community to help uh, the city. So um, we've, we wrapped, we basically wrapped that up. Um, and it would be nice to think about relaunching our neighborhood grant program because there is a desire for it. Um, and I know commissioners um, are desirous of it. So, uh, so we can think about that and think about what money we would put towards it so we can put it in front of the city council and see if they'll approve it. Um, so I think that's, I think I'm going to wrap up. Um, and then see what you guys think if we do more of item three um, at a next meeting and finish up the priorities matrix. Um, because the most, most absolute, most important thing is number one, um, and we can vote on that tonight. So if we set a special meeting, if you guys are um, amenable to that, we will also ask people who have contracts with us to come and give a year end report as to what they've done. We'll ask them to hand in a report um, with the you know, amount of hours they've worked, what they have done, um, how um, how they've accomplished the goals of their contract, et cetera, et cetera. So we will schedule all of that together at one meeting. Uh, so you guys um, get a nice um, education on that. And then we see uh, where we wanna go if we want to um, continue things or um, change everything up or, uh, you know, uh, look, look for new directions. Um, so that is me for now. So Russell, do you want to go ahead? Um, yes, if I may. <clears throat> and first I need to apologize. It looks like my lighting that I'm talking from the shadows that I guess I just have poor lighting in my apartment. <laughs> so. Anyway, unfortunately I need to put in a request. I need to resign from the position of co-chair. Oh no. Um, so I'm working on a house in New Mexico and anticipating a move there, probably not until May or June of next year, but depending on renovation and projects we have going on, it could happen sooner. So I would certainly give due notice <clears throat> of the date that I'm going to leave my seat on the commission. But I think it's, at this point, it's probably important to have <clears throat> somebody in place as the co-chair that will be in place for the year rather than me being here for a couple of months and then say, okay, now I'm leaving. So I wonder if I could get that accepted and put on the agenda for October elections for a co-chair. Oh, I'm so bummed, mm. but it sounds very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think it's sort of time for my next stage after Palm Springs, yeah. certainly after this past summer. I definitely do not want to be here in the summer anymore. So. I think I might just make a complete change. And with a friend, we have this house in New Mexico. So I think that's going to be my next destination. Awesome. Um, so Jay, well, I thank you so much, Russell, for, yeah. the, for the long time that you've been so involved. Um, and I hope we'll have you as long as possible. Um, but well. <laughs> um, I totally understand where yeah. you're coming from. Yeah, I just think it's important <clears throat> to have another commissioner take the seat as co-chair because right now it's, I certainly will focus on my current project and a couple of that I have going on, but I will be sort of somewhat distracted over the next few months. So Jay, do we have, what do we have to do for that? 
Anything? We have to check <clears throat> with the city clerk for process. So I'll let everyone know. Um, it, it may be uh, an election at the following meeting. Uh, and I just want to confirm that uh, process wise. If we do yeah. have these special meetings, Russell, could you be the, the vice chair during those? Or no? Well, then, it would depend on then what we sign for the next regular meeting. I mean, until the election is happening, it will certainly be co-chair until I'm replaced. And okay. Jan, I tried calling you this morning, but just got your voicemail that you weren't available. So that's sort of just thought I would now announce it now. I'd like to go on record to objecting to Russell's move. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Since Thanks. I spent a month in New Mexico last summer, I totally get it. <laughs> Unless there's a guest room for me, I object. Uh, we will have a guest room. Thank you. <laughs> Is it a large guest room? <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably only accommodate two people. <laughs> Wait your turn, Matthew. Wait your turn. <laughs> yeah, to be determined. <laughs> Should I right. go next, or are you, uh, well, Russell? I guess, have more. Today is just going to sort out, sort out the procedural part and let us know if we do the election in October. Um, I'm certainly. I mean, I'm not going anywhere for a couple of months, but I just anticipate this. So I want somebody in the position who's going to give it their full attention. That's it. Okay, great. Well, I, I thank you, Russell, for giving the, all the notice because we've had people resign like at a meeting before we didn't, had no idea they were leaving. So it's really nice you giving us all this notice. I really appreciate it. So yeah, like by the next meeting, the next regular meeting, I would think. Well, Jay will let us know. And then whoever wants to, um, whoever's interested, maybe they reach out ahead of time and let us know and we can kind of give you more info about the position or. Well, yeah, and this gives all of the new commissioners the opportunity to think about if they want to accept the role or put their name up for the role or ask us what it's about, all that sort of thing. So we're all here to yeah, help. And I, yeah, and I was vice chair last year. Um, so if you have, well, I, I, I was vice chair for two years. So if, if anyone has any questions, just let me know as well. So. And we want it to be a more collab, you know, when Russell and I talked, we wanted it to be a more collaborative position. So, because really the only role of the vice chair is if the chair can't chair a meeting. Um, but that's not like a good way of looking at it in my point of view. So. All right, so is that it, Russell? Yes, that is it. We can move on to item G. So item G, discuss public or arts ordinance and mural ordinance. So I would like to ask everybody if they, um, how they feel about the changes that, you know, we worked up last year that were submitted to all of you guys. Um, and if you, or if you have changes to that, if you have other changes um, uh, along with the mural ordinance. And then if we vote on that, vote on it tonight. So Jay, the next meeting, the city council meeting is next, the 23rd, correct? City council meeting is on the 30th. Oh, on the 30th. Oh. So, um, yeah, so that's how we originally scheduled this. So literally we could actually get on the council agenda if we vote tonight, um, because it kind of takes like 10 days basically to get on their agenda. 
Uh, well, so it's um, it's it's possible. <laughs> we, we we could give it a shot. It's it's today was actually the deadline for um, reports for the thirtieth. So uh, if we could go to the following meeting, and I believe we actually have it calendared for the following meeting. Oh, you do. Uh, to just get, yeah. Okay. So if it's the following meeting, what is the date that? Um, October fourteenth, I believe. And what, what date would you need to do the report? Uh, that would be um, uh, early October. Um, no, I, I think actually uh, September 30th would probably um, be the deadline for the report, two weeks in advance. Okay, so um, let me add that to my calendar. Okay, so if we don't vote tonight, if people we don't feel like we can vote tonight and we want to continue this meeting to the 22nd, we could vote on the 22nd. But we need to either vote today or the 22nd so we can get moving with what we wanna do for the year so we're not held up. Tracy, can I interject something? Sure. Uh, two other people along with myself met to just sort of create a mission statement or to, to review it. Um, that may actually, and you guys will probably make some changes to it, but that may actually respond to the city's request about what we want to do this year. Um, because okay. it, it encompasses all of that. Plus it responds to, uh, item G section one. Item G, oh, which is the agenda. So do you want to send that to all of us you could put it in the zoom uh, you know i was uh thinking that i'm chair that that discussion would be part of the uh matrix discussion but um if it fits under item one that would be fine um i, I well i guess i guess if this if so did you use our original mission that we had done a few years ago um, there were there were two that we were working off working of. Here. We used them as a template. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, does this mission statement make edits to the mural to the public arts ordinance or mural ordinance that are different from what we sent out? I don't have it in front of me. I don't believe it does. Gary and Christina can add if they want to also. Okay. Um, well, there's, there's one portion of the mission statement that um, I would actually like to address prior to delving into it, because I think it reflects a lot of what the ordinance and even the mural ordinance is key for that, the, that I think is an interesting discussion point. Um, so maybe we go through the mural, mural, <laughs> mural, mural ordinance. Uh, and then we can, I, I, I like Jay's idea of doing it with the matrix because I think it, we may be getting a, a little ahead and I don't want to get caught in, in the specifics because mural is very tactical, whereas what we did was a little broader. Yeah, and I just put what we came up with in the chat. Um, I think for the, the general public arts ordinance, I know we talked a lot about that on our July 21st meeting. I have a lot of notes um, of things that we had questions about. And I was just wondering, um, Tracy, what, what do you think should be our process for like uh, addressing the things that we talked about in July? How, how do we, because we just talked about a lot of stuff, but we didn't make any tangible updates to the ordinance. So what do you think we should do before we vote on it? So looking at the, this mission statement, the one thing we are not allowed to do at the moment is educate. So unless we change the ordinance, we couldn't use this mission statement. So I agree with the educating. I mean, we've kind of gonzoed it, but we kind of have to follow the, you know, like no one was supposed to be doing these education programs that we've been doing because they're not part of the public arts ordinance. So 
the the arts ordinance is basically we place public art that um, you know supposedly is mostly um, you know mostly businesses would want to place public art but since a lot of them don't seem to want to then we do this other programming so our our purpose is to um, approve art that um, developers bring to us um, you know approve or not approve or you know change etc um, maintain the public art collection um, and um, help the economic development of the city of Palm Springs. So, which is more, and it's more tourist oriented than like resident oriented. So I think if we get changes to the ordinance approved, then we could take a mission like this from that, right? So, um, so yeah, that could be part of the matrix, right? But unless we change the ordinance, um, we're going to be really limited on, you know, like the grant program we did last year, they approved it, but at the end, you know, we had, we had had this whole program approved um, and it was written up in, you know, this, you know, doing things on, you know, uh, closed businesses, doing window things and et cetera, et cetera. But by the end, a bunch of our stuff was, they didn't approve it at the end of the year, even though we had already, you know, gone through and had all this city council approval and they just kind of changed their mind. So, um, and it happened a number of times last year. So we're trying to like nip that in the bud. So we all are on, like we're on the same page as the city council and we're on the same page as city staff. And so we know if we're, you know, because we did a lot of work on things last year that at the end did not, you know, what things that we didn't have to get approved that way, you know, three months earlier, then we ended up having to get them, you know, everything approved by the city council. And they said no to a whole bunch of things that we had spent, you know, six, nine, you know, six months on, nine months on. Uh, because we had approved that whole pot of money for the grant program in order to, you know, make, make it easier for projects to start uh, rather than doing things onesie twosie. So um, the whole, even though we've wanted to change the ordinance for a number of years, like last year's um, stress with um, you know, staying in parameters, you know, made us like, you know, this is what we see is, you know, our way of, um, you know, not being, you know, obviously it was too loosey goosey, but not like in, in the straight jacket that we're in. So, um, And, and j just let me clarify a little bit, um, Tracy, when when we were talking about education in this, you know, we sort of parsed every word and the, the, yeah. the emotional and the intellectual connotation of it. And I think a lot of times art can educate through illumination and uh, spurring discussion. So that was- Oh, the no, I, I totally agree with you. I, like, I read this and I- no, no, I totally agree with you, but but we do have to do the ordinance first before we can tackle yeah. this. The way your mission statement is written, we can't um, apply it to the ordinance at the moment. Um, we have to change the ordinance in order for your mission statement to apply. But I think one of the things we wanted to add to the powers and duties of the commission was the ability to determine our mission. At least I had that we had talked about that. And I didn't know, because I, I think that the version Jay sent out for this meeting is exactly the same as what we had in the, the same proposed changes in July. 
So I didn't know, yeah. are we gonna make more proposed changes? Well, or? that's what this meeting was to discuss. Like if you guys had come up with, you know, if, if between you meeting or between you individually, if you had other ideas or, I kind of have read them, you know, we, you know, I thought, oh, maybe we ask, you know, for more funding, right? And, and I just don't think that's gonna fly. Like I read them again and we did spend a lot of time over the past few years talking, you know, like this, these changes are meant to like pave, you know, repave the road and also open the road, you know? Um, and it kind of reflects a lot of um, issues we had and like desires we had to do like more programming with the museum or, you know, do more programming with uh, the high school or um, have, you know, a public arts, you know, we could have a public arts seminar like, uh, you know, the um, architectural preservation board has or, you know, so it would, it would let us do more projects that are like, you know, written in stone. So Jay can, so I think that it can a commission create its own mission. What, what is your answer to that as from the city point of view? If it's not already created in the um, ordinance, I would think the uh, commission could create its own mission. But what we're talking about here is amending the ordinance. So, you know, it kind of, uh, you know, your, your direction seems to be um, changing the mission uh, either, either way uh, required, whether it be in the ordinance or uh, just through the uh, commission's own actions. Yeah, like we had our own mission. We had a mission for the past few years that we tried, you know, we stro strove to follow. Um, and then this could, you know, we could have this new mission, right? And then that could be the mission that the commission strives to follow for the next, you know, for this term or whatever. So I think that that would be great. So, you know, because the other mission um, I think it was like statement of, I don't know if it was called a mission, maybe it was called mission statement, but it was like, I don't know, like four years old, like Russell and I weren't part of making that. Um, it was the commission prior to us. So it'd be great to have a new um, mission statement, but I do think that follows in the matrix, right? So yes, you can, we can use some of this to put into the matrix, um, but we need to, put the ordinance cart first. And then uh, can I just say something to someone who's, uh, Corrine uh, Griswold um, put something in the chat, but we don't, um, it's, this is a public meeting and we already had our public comments. So, um, so because it's a public meeting, we have to have a transcript of this so I, if you could, you know, if you want to come to our next meeting or we can um, respond to you through email, but we can't respond to you through the chat like you've sent. So I just want to make sure you know, we're not ignoring you. Um, so, um, so why don't we just go through the, ch through the edits and just work through it. I mean, Russell, do you have, you know, Russell was involved in making these changes as well. Do you have any comments that you want to share? Um, <clears throat> well, not exactly because the documents that we had presented at the last meeting were ones that former chair Sheffer and myself and probably a couple of other commissioners had put input into creating their changes. Yeah. So, I mean, I have nothing further to make changes to this, but in the discussion we're having now, if we're just simply going to add a different mission statement, would we include this into the updates we're requesting or does somebody have to approve our mission statement change? 
what would the procedure for that be? Well, I, I think this mission comes from getting our changes done. Yeah, I would tend to agree with that, but I mean, <clears throat> is, is this something that we want to hash out during this meeting? Because I've lost track. Are we doing a study session next Wednesday on the 22nd? Well, it's up to you guys what you guys think. Because originally this was just supposed to be a meeting, then other things got added on it. It was just supposed to be a meeting to talk about the ordinance and the and the um, mural ordinance and kind of what you guys are interested, you know, to kind of start a discussion on what you're interested in doing for this year. All right, well, as far as the changes to the mural ordinance, and I appreciate the input from Gary, Christine and Matthew, are there other changes other than those specific to the mission statement? The mural ordinance or the public arts? Public art ordinance. Pu public arts ordinance. Well. I just, I had written down that we wanted to consider adding um, the power to decommission artworks to the, the powers and duties section, uh, the power to determine our own mission, the power to recommend moving or removing artworks. Um, those were a few of the things that we discussed. Also under permit, permissible expenditures, we talked about um, engineering and structural expenditures as well as decommissioning expenditures. Those are the main yeah. points. Yeah, because my recommendation would be that we should, I think we should, if we want to try to get this to city council for October the 14th, meaning that we need to get it to staff by the 30th of September, we should try to do a study session on the 22nd, because I think this discussion needs like a good hour long hash out yeah. rather than just try to piece it together now when it's already 6 15. Um, it needs its got, own meeting i think yeah, yeah. do you want to send all of us your um your suggestions and then we can kind of work on writing up some language for them to to propose for the next meeting so, so we should email them to you or should we address them now Well, the decommissioning is something that I'm super in favor of. Uh, we've had discussions about this. We have some artwork that just um, <clears throat> is too expensive to um, main repair mm -hmm. um, for the value probably of it. Um, so I think that's a great, I mean, supposedly we already can do that, but it's really great to put more of this stuff in. Yeah, I would, agree. Yeah, I would really like to see all of the new proposed changes come to us over the next few days so we could all decipher it and plan for a special study session on the 22nd so we could really dissect this and interject the changes that our new commissioners are considering. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll have to make it a regular meeting so we can vote on it. But if you guys send us, or ask Jay to send us, so we all can see it written down, it would be great. And then we can kind of, you know, put it into whatever section um, it should be, and then come up with a new, you know, an update to this revised one. So I guess then the question is, do you, so these changes that are in um, red and blue, do these changes appeal to you guys? Do you have any, um, um, any edits to them? And then maybe if, if we're on the same page with the red and the blue changes, then we can do our addition next, you know, to this. So we can kind of, maybe if we just kind of go through, um, let's just go through this and then quickly, and then we can have more discussion about it. So you guys kind of have more information um, on it. So the blue edits, 
city of council uh, approval required for expenditures over $25,000. City manager may approve any contract under $25,000, regardless of type of expenditure. So that kind of happened, that happened last year where a bunch of our contracts got really held up for months and months and months and months. And now it's happening with um, any project that we do. We have to have every single expense, even for a sign that's $50 or $10 approved by the city council. And they really don't wanna to have to, you know, it's, that's actually asking a lot of work for a lot more people to, um, to, you know, put all these things on the city council agenda, and, you know, have them approve like a $50 expenditure. So that's, that's where that um, comes from. Temporary art installations um, initiated by, by the Public Arts Commission of less than $25,000 do not uh, require city council approval, but may require temporary use permit. So this, um, it's self-explanatory. So it kind of, you know, is in line with the one above. Um, because they're temporary pieces of art, they're not any permanent piece of art, the city council ha does have to approve. So um, they do have to, you know, like the tot they had to approve, but any expenditures like, um, so it would be a, a temporary piece of art that would maybe only be up for a couple of years. We take that out of the, you know, permanent public art that the city council has to approve. And then any kind of expenditures like buying a sign or having a, you know, a poster made or uh, hanging something on a wall that needs to be framed or, you know, um, uh, uh, getting an engineering report or, you know, so that's all the, those things kind of uh, fall into a, um, the first bullet point. And then the second bullet point is a temporary art bu bullet point. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and then the mural ordinance one, um, what we've asked for is that if, if the, the Public Arts Commission wants to do a mural that we, we um, pay for and we commission ourselves, that it doesn't go through um, the, the city mural ordinance, which includes um, a lot of paperwork, it includes a fee. Um, we've, we've paid that fee for a number of people coming, wanting to do murals for us. Um, we would still have a public meeting, uh, which uh, to approve whatever mural or um, that we were commissioning, so which we do now. Um, but it would allow us to kind of cut through some of the red tape since we are part of the city and not an outside group coming in. So that is the mural ordinance one. Um, and then under red, so uh, council approval for all contracts um, for maintenance for um, uh, permanent works of art that exceed $25,000. So, um, so we're trying to go back to this $25,000 thing we had in years past. Uh, so things like that go to council for approval. Um, allow us to establish our own policies and procedures for um, for the commission work that we're doing. Um, establish a review mechanism for temporary art installations. So we, we, um, we did all of these temporary art um, installations over the past couple of years and we said that we would review them um, and uh, determine if we wanted to ask if they were going to, be, to make them permanent 
or if we want to um, uh, deaccession them, um, and what cost that would be, et cetera. So we would uh, develop those policies and procedures for that. Um, Madam Chair, I actually had a question or possibly a suggested edit on that section. I don't know if now's the time. Oh, sure. To bring that up. Um, so rather than just approving it for one year and then deciding if it's if the piece can be permanent, is there potential for adding like a renewal process for the temporary status so that it's not a year or forever? Oh yeah. So yeah, we could do that. So yeah, we they they, um, you know, some of them were six months, some of them were two years. So we just wanted to add this renewal period. So yeah, we could, we could add in there, you know, um, and it could be subject to, you know, another year renewal period or something like that. Okay. So yeah, we, we definitely could add that. Um, and then seven, um, so this is something you know that has happened over the past few years because we used to have city staff. Um, so we, um, at the moment, we've been contracting uh, work. So, um, so, which wasn't some of it's in our in in the ordinance, but not all of it. Uh, you know, like we can hire someone to do like clerical work. Um, but not uh, necessarily more involved work. So, so that is the uh, reason behind that. Um, and then we, we would like to, to have, we would like to be able to get grants. So not all of the money is coming from our budget, like maybe we match people. And so we, that would be a really nice ability, right, in the city. Um, and then to maybe do programming with other city departments. Um, and then, then 13 is a weird item because um, we've never gotten private donations or um, we, some of the art has been maybe endowed a bit. We're, we're still researching that. Um, but I think we just thought that was extraneous and not functional. Um, and then uh, the items with the asterisks, one, uh, one and two, um, the Arts Commission before Russell and I started and in the first year we were on it, they had this um, public art show for, I don't know, decades maybe, um, but it's not uh, part of what we're allowed to do. Um, and then we held, uh, that was a project I did, uh, the 30 by 30 um, celebration of our 30th anniversary. And um, so my project, one of my projects that year was to do a show called 30 by 30, um, 30 ideas, um, uh, for uh, public art, for new public art for the city. And it was an open call uh, for artists. And we had a show of 30 artists at the uh, public uh, Palm Springs Art Museum. It was really amazing. And Tot is one of the uh, pieces, one of the artists who submitted work who uh, we really loved. Uh, so we've um, actually commissioned a bunch of work from that show. So this would allow us to do that. And then um, the arts education in the community, which could either be with the museum, with the school, with uh, some other kind of, you know, some non, you know, other kind of program or something like that. So uh, we really, I really believe that um, public arts education is really important uh, to nurture our youth and, um, um, I've done the, the, um, uh, the, like a, 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 um, a class at Palm Springs High School for three years now. Uh, and it's an amazing uh, class. We've shown their work at the Palm Springs Art Museum and 
we really want to commission a piece of their work from this year's show, this year's uh, classes. Um, so that number two wraps all of that in. Um, and then uh, ask the third asterisk there, uh, we would like to request, um, so that's the same thing wraps that in. So those are kind of the reason for all of these changes. And then if we're, you know, we're not gonna vote on it tonight, maybe you just take that info back and ruminate over it and see if you have other uh, changes. But please, um, send us uh, your ideas and we'll put them into, you know, we can write them into the correct sections um, or add a section or whatever. Because um, once we approve what we'd like to do, then the city attorney will put it into legalese for the city council. So does that work for you guys? Does that help? I do have one question, um, and I'm not sure um, to answer your question. Yes, it does help, but then that prompts me for another um, question, which I'm not I'm not sure if I'm understanding this correctly. On uh, number four, the ineligible expenditures, I just want to um, make sure because. I'm not understanding the way that's written. Uh, there's a mural and I wanted to ask Jay if it was put onto the agenda because I know um, there was an email sent out with the JOJ um, mural, the Richard Wyatt uh, Jr. mural to be restored. Um, and the way it's reading here, I'm not sure if that makes it ineligible. I'm not sure if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, which which I don't for are, are you architecture? Yeah, it's um. Let's see. It's really weird because when you send me stuff, um, like for instance, when you sent me all that information about the matrix, the matrix only came out with like a redacted. It looked like an FBI form. Um, but when I pulled it up on my computer, I could see that it was a form. But on my laptop and on my phone, you can't pull it up. So there's that. And then I'm not sure. Uh, it says it excerpts from the public arts ordinance and it is labeled at the bottom um, ineligible expenditures on page three. Does that make sense? Okay, so I just want to make sure that this particular venture that I'm venturing doesn't um, fall under that because it's an architectural rehabilitation or historical preservation. It, I, it could be loosely put under yeah. that. I, I think want we'd to make... have to, yeah, we'd have to talk about it. And we also have, I mean, we have to come up with a, with a, you know, it's kind of putting the cart behind the horse because we don't know what this costs. What and uh, cost? well, we have to make a proposal to everybody about what it would cost. And we should ask, the city attorney if that um for the joj mural what the joj mural will cost yeah okay all that information was sent to you and jay and the mayor and yeah city it was just, it was too late for this meeting so we, and the mayor so, sent an email saying that she wanted it on the agenda well the agenda was already sent out so oh not um, our agenda the city council agenda Right. Uh, a couple steps. Uh, the uh, yeah, Arts Commission uh, would need to recommend that to the City Council. Uh, it's, it's uh, it, which, you know, and Arts Commission did approve it. My understanding is, though. We didn't approve anything. We didn't. Oh, we, okay. approved doing, we approved doing an engineering. Review. Yeah, that's what we're right, talking about. Right. And so we don't have an engineering report yet to say the construction of the uh, tile artwork on the wall at James O'Jesse is feasible. And just for everyone else's benefit, it's uh, uh, the mural on the James O'Jesse uh, uh, southeast, southwest facing wall uh, uh, 
is being proposed to be redone in tile. And the tile, the question is, will the wall support the tile? Uh, and, and so that's where we're at now. Um, and unfortunately, um, you know, we had <laughs> our city engineer, assistant city uh, 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 manager, Marcus Fuller, uh, participating in the meetings, and he would have been able to provide us with that direction, but he has uh, since left the city. So um, his, uh, he was not able to advance that. Now, as far as getting that item onto the city council agenda, um, you know, once all this information is uh, uh, digested by the Public Arts Commission and that recommendation is made to move forward with the dollar amount or the cost, uh, then uh, we would have to draft the staff report, provide the engineering report, and uh, then uh, request that the um, city council approve it. But let me get to item number four first. <laughs> I don't think it's, uh, or when it says architectural elements, I, I think what that was referring to is pieces that would ordinarily go into a building anyways. Um, and so if, if say there's, uh, you know, uh, you're, you're substituting in, I think what I was trying to defend against was using public art dollars to build a building uh, yeah. that the developer would otherwise have to build with their own funds. So or I think it's just like, you know, addition, you know, architectural niceties on it. So, yeah. Yeah. But I think that project would go under 4-1 um, because it would be a limited edition reproduction. So, um, so are you saying that it, Oh, just a second. Are you saying that it's it would be ineligible because it would fall under one? No, I'm saying the opposite of that. But okay, I just wanted to understand. And then also, um, well, we, we can't talk about this because it's not on the agenda. No, I was um, asking. It's not, I was fair, asking, to, it's not fair to all the other commissioners because they don't have this information. Well, it's about the ordinance, and if you want me to make an amendment to it, I need to know how it falls in in order to write the amendment. So I'm just trying to understand. No, that's fine. I, I, I think it would not be a problem, but with the, it, it, we'd always have to ask the city attorney, right? So, like, I don't think we're, it, it sounds like, to me, it sounds like a project that we would, you know, it's under our purview, um, but you'd want to always double check, I would say. Because it's such a grand expense, you know, it's something that, you know, we should, you know, it, this money would take up basically most of our fund. So it's something that we would really have to think about. You know, I think it requires a lot of discussion with the, with the rest of the members and um, ideas for funding it. I understand that all, Tracy, but this ball has gotten dropped so many times on the community and Jay just said that Mark left and we don't even know. And that's the step that I need in order to figure out how to even get it to the meeting in order for it to be approved. No, because you, if we don't have the, excuse me, let me finish. If we don't have the structural engineering report, that's vital. Like the people in my community really need to know that. I mean, there's other people in other communities that they want to get utility, but they want to get stuff approved, but I'm not getting the feedback because there's people that are leaving. They're leaving the commission, they're leaving the city council. So I'm just trying to find out how do I keep the ball rolling so I don't let the people of Palm Springs down because that's well, all I think. Wow. Yeah, on this, on this project, the first thing we have to do is, and we asked, um, we asked um, Cindy, they were going to follow through with getting a um, recommending, you know, I know this is off topic, I'll just do it for one minute, um, an engineer to go look at the building. So what we need to do is follow up with Cindy on that. And then bring that report to us with, you know, with all your other information, and then we should all just talk about it. So, um, you know, we can have people from the community um, come and talk about it and, and, and just kind of work out, you know, the solution, what we want to do. 
All um, of that, how, uh, forgive me, Tracy, all of that is like, that's already the only, all of that's been done. The only thing where we are is that the structural engineering report needs to be done. And I'm not, I haven't been given Shonda, the information. Shonda, of, none, of this has, none, of this has, none of this has been done with the current commission and none of it was done with the prior commission. The only thing we voted for what we voted $5,000 to do the engineering report. So we need to, you know, bring things in front of this whole new commission and get their buy-in and get their opinion on it. We can't just railroad people. Um, I'm not trying to railroad people. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out the information of what step to take next. I'm not trying to railroad need, anybody. It's just the ball was dropped. The, and I would say the, uh, get the engineering the, report. The, what was that? Chair, the uh, engineering report was uh, uh, approved. Well, well uh, procuring an engineering report was approved. So uh, staff, we will uh, uh, get on that and uh, make sure that, that that moves forward. And uh, it is an important piece of determining the feasibility of this project. So we will uh, we'll proceed with that. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Commissioner Favo, we are losing staff. And so um, it's, it's uh, difficult to stay on top of projects when the person who is leading it, uh, 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 you know, makes a good like, career move. <laughs> I, I'm here to help you all get yeah. beautiful art. And I just, when the balls drop, I just want to know how to pick it up. And I wasn't told and I didn't know. And I, and I just want to do what's best for the community and for Palm Springs. And I want to get it done. And I really just need your all's help to get it done. And uh, talking about the value of how much it's going to cost, I guess it's moot until we get the engineering report. So thank you. Yeah. I don't mean to like railroad everybody. I just need to know. And I'm going to ask when I need to know. Yeah, yeah. I just don't want to um, have side, you know, the other commissioners aren't aware of the information. So I don't, I, it's not fair to them. So I just want to make sure we- yeah, I'm that. not aware of information either. So we're all in the dark. So that's why I'm just trying to bring it to the light. So we all know now. Okay, so let's move on to uh, any edits that anyone wants to give us tonight, or if you want to just um, email them so we can incorporate them for next week. Oh, email. Okay. Yep, email sounds good. Okay, so, sorry, it's, um, what time is it there? 641. What time? 641. Oh, okay. So my clock is right. Sorry, I'm five hours ahead. Um, all right, so let's move on to, if you guys don't mind, if we, is, is everybody willing and wanting to do a meeting next week? Fine. Yes, I'm fine. So we'll okay, so then I would propose that we continue item three um, until next week. Uh, Tracy, can I be high maintenance again and ask if uh, is the Wednesday good for everybody or can we move it to a Thursday? Because on Wednesdays, I'm going to miss another of the Black History committee meeting and I, I want to stay connected to all the meetings in all the communities so I can help get more art to everybody. Um, is next week is a city council meeting though, right, Jay? The Wednesday, next yeah. Thursday. No, next Thursday. Is oh, next Thursday, oh, forgive me. Yeah. It is not. No, it's not. not. Okay. So I, could, I could do Thursday. So maybe show of hands if people want to do Thursday, if that works for everybody. I'm fine with Thursday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This is not the meeting where you were talking about bringing in the contractors and having them give reports. No, that will be the next meeting. So we can just get this stuff. Once we get this stuff done and dusted, we can like move on to actual work. So, and then we won't, it won't be as painful. <laughs> so do you mind if we continue item three to next week? Everybody. September 23rd, Thursday? Yes. And by item three, do you mean? G3. 
Oh, in G3, the ordinance? No, we're under, so we've moved on to from the ordinance. Uh, so we would be on item G2. But I'm asking if oh. we can continue item G3. And so G3. agenda item G3, Six. right? Yeah, until next Thursday. Well, aren't we still on agenda item G1? Well, I think it sounds like we've finished it for tonight, but if I'm wrong, let me know. Well, we didn't talk about the mural ordinance and we didn't talk about the George Floyd mural. So we're yeah, we're going to go to two next. The mural ordinance, um, um, Russell can talk to more of those changes because he was um, um, he was a driver beyond, beyond that. But most of those changes are in the revised update to the public arts ordinance. So Russell, do you wanna go over any other additional, additional mural changes that weren't in the well, no, what I would recommend being that we've decided that we're going to do this meeting on the 23rd, that we should address the ordinance and the mural ordinance at the same time, because it's basically, there are two parts of each moving pieces. Um, there's really the, the only change that we're requesting or amendment that we're requesting for the mural ordinance is to allow us as the Arts Commission to approve murals up to 25,000 without going through the city permit process. We would do the public meeting or public hearing during our meeting, but it gives us the opportunity to do them without the whole procedural aspect of the current mural ordinance. So that was in the um, changes to the public arts ordinance that I read. I would recommend, and I, I don't know if Russell uh, will say the same thing, I would recommend only that change to the mural ordinance because we spent a lot of time a few years ago changing this mural ordinance to what it is now. It's a thousand times better. Mm -hmm. It's much cheaper, the mural, um, doing a mural in the city, it's much more available to everybody now. Uh, the rules are so much less than they were. It's, it is a really good ordinance. We just want to change it for our own commission. Uh, yes. Yeah, because actually my recommendation has always been not to say that we want to change the mural ordinance. We simply want to add an addendum to it, which allows us specifically to do murals, commission them up to $25,000 without the permit process only holding to our public meeting. So any other questions on that? That's certainly something the rest of the commissioners can think about and then we'll address it more specifically next week on the 23rd. Yeah, like let us know if you have any proposed changes. Does that help, Christina? Yeah, yeah, I was just um, trying to suss out like what we're looking at because we had like this thing with very, very small print that was sent. <laughs> so I didn't know, if, are we trying to like read this whole thing I and just make edits to it or what? Uh, yeah, so. I just wanted you to have a, a copy okay. of everything so you actually so you didn't have to like go search for it um, okay. on the website. So. Yeah, and then there was the other one, the bigger print. So I didn't know how much we were editing. So thank you. Yeah, that helps. Oh, well. um, okay, so are we are we good on item um, G1? So any, ch any um, suggestions for changes you guys are gonna send around, we're going to um, ruminate over them and then try to um, put write them up in, um, you know, 
like a color for each per, you know, whatever you guys send them as a group of three changes, we'll make them purple or something like that and add them in. Um, and then we can discuss it next Thursday and then vote on it. I have a question. Yeah. Prior to the prior to the meeting, when everybody has sent in their suggestions, can we have a copy prior to the meeting so we can review all of the suggestions? Oh yeah, definitely. So we're prepared to discuss it. Yeah, and the agenda has to go out tomorrow, or it has to be done tomorrow, right, Jay? So, um, so if you know, I kind of compiled. Gary's into a, an item that could be shared with everybody, like he sent an email. So I'll compile them if people send them uh, individually. I'll compile them into one document and then we'll send it around to everybody. So we, I'll use this one, this revised one as a guidepost. And then we'll just put your suggestions, changes slash edits in. And you need them by what time tomorrow? So, oh, no, you don't have to send them by tomorrow. We just oh, have okay. the agenda. The, um, Madam Chair, this will be a special meeting, which requires only 24 hours notice. Uh, oh. So, um, you know, we have and a little we, bit of we, flexibility we on the agenda. On oh, okay, great. Yeah, if you guys send them by Monday, I'm flying out on Friday. Uh, I get home on Saturday. and uh, So if you can do it by Monday, that would be great. All right, so are we cool on G1? Yes. Um, 6.50. So I would really like to be done by seven. So you, since we're having another meeting, we don't keep you guys. Um, <clears throat> so I would like to continue item G3. And some of G6 to the next meeting. Um, I think we could, go, could do item G2. Do you want to uh, just kind of talk about that, uh, Gary, since everybody has the letter? Yeah, you know, it, it got me thinking when people were suggesting other places to um, move the mural. And we sort of have a couple different uh, boundaries. One is the sheer size of the mural. Mm -hmm. And two is the material of how it's manufactured. And as I was driving around the city, I just thought, well, you know, let's take a step back. And what are we focused on? Are we focused on the actual tangible mural, the delivery mechanism, or the message? And to me, the message is more important than the three pieces of plywood that will then have to be touched up. And, you know, if we move it to another place, we may have to move it in another year. Um, and, you know, I think one thing you were saying, Tracy, at the last meeting is, you know, the city is developing very, very quickly. And we're going to reach the point where there's not many places to put things anymore of that scale. And it got me thinking that, you know, and this is one thing I mentioned at one of the very first meetings is I want to try and create a place where we can have socially active stationary pieces of artwork and in a way that's more proactive than reactive. And you'd mentioned uh, the park at the corner of, I believe, Amato between Indian and Palm, um, where that weird fountain is, which would be great. But then I was driving by the parking garage and I thought, you know what, we have these big open places here and that could be a great place that, to put messaging of some kind if we controlled it. And so I, but I understand that, you know, the, the George Floyd mural has a very special place for a lot of people. Um, I just want to make it more impressive. I want to give it a sense of agency um, rather than just ad hoc, because that's what it was intended for. It was three pieces of plywood and then painted on the on the wall behind it. So wherever we do it, we're going to have to continue with the reconstruction of it. And I wanted to address that point because I think that as we move forward, we should be making a more deliberate choice with how we determine what is important, not only to put our funds behind, but also what does Palm Springs and the Public Arts Commission stand for? That's it. So does anyone have, um, does anyone want to take a, a shot at, um, you know, have something to say about this? Um, yeah, let me just make a couple of comments, if I may, because uh, certainly 
the George Floyd mural, even though we on the commission have approved the expenditure of $3,800 for its relocation and restoration at a different location, city council has not yet approved the funding for that. I expected it would have been on their last meeting and it was not. So that is still up in there because we certainly do need to have their approval before we can do anything. And most certainly because I've been looking around and speaking to local developers, the size is indeed a factor. Um, I did today just speak to Adam Gilbert from the firm and there's a possibility of a building they just sold, which is the 330 North Palm Canyon, which has the, I think hated by everyone mural on it, the lady and the snake. <laughs> <laughs> so great to see that gone. So that could be a possibility, but I certainly am also very agreeable to the proposition of making it a per permanent mural somewhere else and not just a temporary piece that we keep shuffling around. So we, we could address this in a couple of ways. We could put this on our next agenda item being that it's not gone to city council yet and, and firmly decide, do we want to indeed move this or do we want to just recreate it on a more, more permanent site somewhere else in town? Because it is, it's, it's, it's challenging finding a wall that's 40 feet wide to accommodate this mural. So I think I've approached several um, developers and walls and they've all said no to it because of the size. So. I'm open to either. And like I said, city council hasn't approved it yet. So we're still in that limbo period. So we could agenda, put this on the agenda for our October meeting and just hold off on putting it into the city council. I'm open to all, any or all of that. And, and, and Russell, you sort of hit on a, a point that, you know, I think that the, the George Floyd murder uh, became a global incident and it, you know, just the response of of the entire country and realizing, and it just was this, everybody had to sort of, you know, take a, a stop and take a breath. Right. At, is this who we are? What do we represent? And I've heard from friends in Palm Springs, they said when they drove by the mural, it, it hit them over the head and it stopped them. And they were just like, this is great in Palm Springs. Yeah. And I agree with all that. And that's what I'm saying. I think if, if we do as a, as a commission support that message, let's give it a little more respect than finding another temporary home and then another temporary home. Um, and let's find a place that we can make this respectable. Yeah. Yeah, the other, the so other idea, this was Russell's project. So, um, so I, I really appreciate what you said, Russell. And the, the other way of looking at it too, maybe we'll want, you know, because I, I was on this, you know, I, I, I really like to um, support other commissioners' projects. You know, I, I, I really think it's important if we can get to consensus on things. Um, and sometimes you don't always get what you want. Um, and sometimes you do. And, or we just, um, you know, reach a consensus. So, but I'm, you know, I kind of had said last year, you know, I don't want to renew it because it's a piece of temporary art. And I think, you know, it's, it's, um, it, you know, it's art of the moment. And, you know, sometimes, you know, it's, it's okay to, you know, it's ephemeral um, and it's okay not to renew it. However, you know, we could look at, but I did vote to, um, to, you know, move forward because I do respect the work of the commissioners and the idea behind them. And I thought it was important to support it. But now that it's come up again, maybe another way of looking at it too is, you know, the message is not ephemeral, right? So, um, and we wanna make sure the message isn't ephemeral. So maybe it's, you know, George Floyd mural up to, you know, 2.0 or, or have the artists reimagine it. So it's a new piece of art and we're not just copying an old piece of art. Um, so it could be, you know, that could be really exciting, right? And more exciting for the artists than just, you know, trying to reproduce their same exact piece of work. And then maybe, 
the size of the wall would change. So maybe there would be more options or something like that. And then donate the, um, the pieces that exist uh, will be extant to someone who would like to hang them, right? And, you know, we could um, uh, produce a story for it, right? Like, you know, with, you know, photograph of how it was, you know, installed, you know, it could be a whole um, education tool, right? Like, you know, uh, you know, these, you know, because it's all related to COVID too, right? It's, it's also, things were shut down, everything was boarded up, like this whole idea behind a lot of the, the art, ephemeral art that happened in the United States was because of that too, right? So beyond the message of George Floyd, it's kind of this whole COVID, you know, how people were reaching out to give people messages. So we could do kind of a storyboard about that with the pieces and then find, you know, donate them to someone who would like to house them. Right, so it memorializes that project, and then, um, you know, we re envision um, the George Floyd, um, you know, to have longevity, right? Yeah, to, to create a whole new world. So that's just an idea. So, right. so shall we plan for this to be on our agenda for our October, regular meeting in October? Um, sure. One thing that I will do is start looking for actual walls first with permission from a landlord or even if it's a city wall and the other commissioners can do the same thing, have the place for it and then determine the message rather than creating a vision and finding a wall to fit it. <laughs> you know, no, no, I think that's great. And I love the idea of putting murals on that parking garage. It's so ugly. And um, so if we could... I mean, I think that would be a great project, public arts project. Oh yeah, even the parking garage across from the museum is hideous. <laughs> yeah, we talked about doing murals on that, you know, but they, one of the former city council members, you know, was, you know, he kind of designed the colors and the painting of that. So that was kind of untouchable at the time. But now he's gone and um, it, you know, it, it's already needs a new paint job, so. So yeah, that would be a great other project. All right. So George discussion in October. Yeah. So we can we put that on the agenda for the next regular meeting, Jay. So regular meeting. Uh, the next meeting will be a special meeting. So this will be the October regular meeting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. So um, so we're continuing three. So, so four, we should finish next week, but I, we should start it today. Um, and then we should, and then I would like to continue. Five, we kind of discussed during my remarks. Um, but I think we should add one more idea um, is temporary art, um, you know, having, um, a group that wants to um, review all of our temporary art that we um, approved over the past two years, so. or maybe three years. There is still some temporary art. So uh, people who would like to work on that. So I'll send an email with this list so everybody has it if you weren't writing it down. Um, and then, um, Matthew, could we continue your 6th to next week as well? Absolutely. You mean October 30th or not? in the October 14th meeting? To um, next Thursday. That's the fine. Okay. All right. So um, the matrix thing. Um, so the city council sent this out. It looked like other commissions had done this before, but we never did. And um, so they want like two priorities from us. And my recommendation for the first priority is to put updating our, our um, public arts ordinance. Um, and we can add 
multiples, but I think it would be better if we're brief so we can say at the end of the year that we accomplished our goals. Um, so that to me is priority number one. Um, but what are you, do you, what other priorities can you guys think of or do you have on your mind and um, talking about the mission statement you worked on and um, do you have any ideas or do you wanna still think about it? I guess on this matrix, I guess I misunderstood its intent. I thought it was coming to each commissioner to come up with a list. So, I mean, it sort of showed up without an expl explanation as to what it is, so. I yeah, gonna... like we just got it and um, in that original thing that I sent, it had, um, it had, uh, uh, what's that commission that you also run, Jay? The sustainability. sustainability. Yeah, it had sustainability right. as an right. example. No, I think uh, um, what, what Russell's saying is accurate, you know, um, having each commissioner contribute their thoughts, but it will be consolidated by the group into uh, the commission's matrix. So ultimately it is boiled down to the uh, two priorities of the commission. And I believe the intent here is, um, you know, to, to try and focus the entire city as all the commissions are doing this on, on, on uh, you know, the attainable uh, uh, one year goals. And I, I think it also calls for identifying future year goals too, a couple uh, future year goals. So, and they also wanna look at it in ways that, that the commission supports the work of the city council because ultimately it is all the city and, you know, they, they uh, kind of make the final decisions with um, all the actions anyways, all the major actions. So, um, you know, I think uh, what they wanted to see is something focused uh, on maybe those two goals for the year and then the upcoming year. And uh, hopefully that uh, can uh, uh, get to the uh, city council for them to take a look at it and uh, run the city in a more streamlined fashion. So when are they going to use this at their re like retreat or whatever, their meeting? Like when, when do they, do you know uh, when that- It's is? gonna be uh, early November or, but really having to get all the information together uh, later in October. Um, it, you know, and, and having just done this with the uh, Human Rights Commission, you know, they were, um, you know, happy to uh, identify what, what they believe in there, you know, a few commissioners did throw out some ideas, uh, the chair in that group will be consolidating them into a draft and sending that out again, we will be sending that out again to the rest of that commission uh, in terms of process. So, um, you know, those ideas uh, can flow in. Um, and we've had some good discussion about, you know, looking by looking at the ordinance, things we're doing, uh, but maybe, maybe if there were just one or two items, uh, you know, we wouldn't be uh, having, having to push items off the agenda to the next meeting. So uh, I think that's kind of the, um, the thought. I'm sorry, can you, repeat that so yes um, if there were like uh the goal or the priority for the year were the focus of the commission um uh you know and, and we're looking at many many things right now uh but i think what uh they the council are wanting to see here is uh you know what is achievable what is the goal and the priorities for the public arts commission uh, over the next year. And uh, Chair, uh, you know, you're updating the ordinance is a good one. Uh, maybe there's a, a project, um, uh, you know, just education may be part of it. 
Um, I believe the uh, Human Rights Commission really focused on facilitating communication in the community. So, um, you know, that's kind of a, uh, another area that, that they looked at, so. Yeah, it could be, yeah, so it's not an exhaustive list. It's just kind of what we think is accomplishable. You and know, and your we top do, priority. We can do much more, right, yeah. Right. Yeah, top priorities. Um, oh. I mean, do people want to throw out some ideas and then, you know, I'll take a few notes and then maybe we, um, maybe people email more ideas and then like with the ordinance, we'll kind of, you know, like what Jay was saying, the Human Rights Commission did, like um, we'll kind of combine them and then um, put them out for the meeting. So if we approve, if we finished it by the next meeting, that would work for them. Yes, yes Madam Chair, yeah. I, would, I would recommend that because I certainly think priority number one should be making the changes to the our arts ordinance. Yeah, and then each one of those commissioners can send you two or three other items so that our meeting next week we can handpick the next two that would go onto the list. Yeah, that's great. Okay. And sorry, Jay, um, do you recommend that these items be broad or specific? It's somewhere in between, Commissioner Armstrong. Uh, you know, we want it to be achievable. Uh, maybe it's, um, you know, just maybe the steps in a broad uh, goal would be what that focus is. Uh, and in terms of specific, you know, that's kind of why I said project because project kind of lends itself to that, but being, uh, uh, you know, bringing, taking on something that, or there's an end result. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I think it would start with what each of you believes is important for the Arts Commission contribution to the city. So, so and, and what I mean by, could we be as broad as say, um, now that we have five districts within the city of Palm Springs, the Public Arts Commission is going to work towards having a piece of permanent art representing each district in each district rather than just focusing on downtown. Is that broad enough? That's that broad enough. Uh, I would think the steps in there are um, working uh, with uh, the communities in each of those districts to identify uh, types of art they would like to see, locations. Um, and uh, so there's, you know, there's a little bit of work there, but um, that's, that's a great goal to, to really spread that out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's broad enough also that um, that wouldn't be like, you wouldn't be able to accomplish that in one year. I don't think like maybe say like over a two year timeline or something, but yeah, that's great. You know? And then it doesn't well, walk into murals in every park. Or so. It's just ensuring that each district is represented with um, a priority in the Public Arts Commission. Yeah, and part of the reason, like I came up with this neighborhood grant program the other year. Part of the, the reasoning behind that was I felt, and, and that's part of the reason I joined the commission year for my first term, was that I really felt like public art was not represented in the whole community. And I really feel like um, permanent residents and you know, art should be everywhere. Um, that was our uh, theme one year. Um, so, you know, COVID really messed up with that outreach. So, you know, what, you, you know, the five district thing is going into kind of what we were talking about with the neighborhood grant programs too. So. You know, if we want to do the neighborhood grant program, maybe we change it to five district, part, you know, think about it in uh, different ways. But, you know, that I think that outreach is really important. Yeah. And it's something we couldn't accomplish last year because of COVID. I mean, we did in a way, but we couldn't get like all the community. We wanted like the community to be involved, right? Like we wanted to hear what they wanted. 
We didn't want to just impose things on them. Um, but because of COVID, we couldn't you know, make that happen. So, um, so that was the reasoning behind that. So. But hopefully now, hopefully we'll be more open and we can um, you know, work to do these um, neighborhood slash um, district projects. Does anyone else want to weigh in? Yes. Um, uh, with the neighborhood projects, like for instance, um, there was a number of uh, boxes approved. And, um, and like uh, neighborhoods, uh, like one particular neighborhood uh, even went as far as to do the legwork of finding the artists, going on our website, picking out the artists that they liked, submitted it to us and asked us, you know, hey, we would love this art in our community, um, but there's like red tape in it. So we need to figure out like, uh, for instance, I had to go and take those pictures and figure out if the city even owned some of the pieces of uh, areas that they wanted to get painted. And um, then I narrowed it down. There was only two areas that could be painted in that, but then um, getting the approval for that to be approved. Um, so like how, how in the structure of this five districts thing, would we ask um, the parameters of what spaces can be painted? Um, because not everybody knows all the neighborhoods. And if we ask the neighbor captains or the neighbor, neighborhood leaders um, to give us that research and information, because I think Tracy, that's what you started to do when you did the neighborhood grants, the neighborhoods were able to um, reach out and say what kind of art they wanted. And then we were able to allocate and try to get that ball rolling and, and um, get it done. So um, I, if we're working on that, that part of the structure needs to be worked out because that's the part that's causing the most red tape. And I don't know if that helps with what you were asking, but. That's well, we're question. just throwing out things for priorities. The project that you're talking about, um, the way we're structured at the moment is those additional boxes that you want, the city council has to approve. So we have to vote on them. So you could ask to have it put on the agenda for our next meeting. Um, and we can vote on those two additional boxes you want and um, send it to the city council. Oh, that would be great. Um, but in terms of what Gary was saying, um, to be able to get the well, I think information like, of, of what we can do in that specific neighborhood, uh, like um, if the neighborhood has like a just a random wall that's um, that the city we're doesn't. Kind of getting to. into the weeds, though. Like we're just looking at this as kind of an overarching thing. But if we want to do the neighborhood grants again, we, we will have to like write them up again and vote on them. And, um, you know, we could include all of that in it. But this is, I, I think the goal of this is it's not so, you know, down to the details. It's like, we would like to work, um, you know, with the goal of getting one piece of art in each district, period, right? Like we want to work with all of the communities, we want equity, we want, uh, you know, community involvement, but it's not going to be like which wall. So don't know, get that that's, specific that's like, report. That's like further down the road. Yeah. So don't get that specific when we're writing it up. If we have that information, don't put it in there. Is that what you're saying? That's what I'm asking. No, no, we're just trying to come up with these goal, basically goals for this matrix. Okay. So it's I just, not I, like, okay. yeah. It's, yeah, it's like writing up goals and how we're going to assess the goals and how we're going to, you know, make the goals happen and, and um, you know, if it's a doable goal or not. Okay. Oh, so um, can I ask to have that put on the agenda so the boxes will be voted on the next meeting? At the next regular meeting. Can you right. write it up but, for everybody? But, so 
But in order for me to write it up, do I write it up? This is my confusion. Do I write it up as the as the five boroughs or whatever we're gonna? No, no, we're just or we're doing it neighborhood. No, we're we're just talking now about our goals basically for this matrix. So what you're talking about is a, the stop in the name of love project. You want to do two additional boxes. So just write up like you know the price it's going to be um and and you know kind of what that lady said in the chat um you know three or four paragraphs so everybody else knows what this is um and then propose it and then we can vote on it but since it's not on the map of stop in the name of love i'm trying to get clarity on if it should be the neighborhood underneath the neighborhood goals or but underneath you know, but I'm there's, trying. No there's no neighborhood project at the moment. We're just talking about a goal. If you want something voted on, it's stop in the name of love point 2.0. It's completely separate from what we're talking about. Right now. I didn't think it was because I was trying to, because Gary had said something about the neighborhoods, but okay, that I, he's, I just want to prolong. He's, just, he's throwing out an idea of a goal that he would like to pursue. Yeah. That's right. Something. And I was throwing out the with that goal, do we need to add all the steps and additional information into the matrix? That's what I was asking. No, we don't want to get that specific. So th this is yeah. a project you're already yeah. no, the, on. Uh, project I'm sorry, Jerry. Uh, I was just trying to answer. Go ahead. Uh, sorry, Jay. No, no, no. Just uh, as a goal, it's, it's high level. So um, we don't need those specifics. And maybe that helps. Answer Maybe if we put the questions. Pacifics, we'd actually get stuff done quicker. I'm just thinking out loud. Forgive We've me. We've gotten a ton of stuff done, um, really. So this is just goals. The city council has asked us to do goals, so we're just throwing out goals. I, but I also want us to have the process of how the goals uh, get executed because people are leaving and people are dropping the ball, and I just want to. But this that is. This I, I'm is just asking for it to be part of our goals. That's all. What you should do is ask for this item to be put on the agenda, send it to me, write it up, three or four paragraphs so we can submit it and we can vote on it. It, it doesn't have, you know, you already have this project approved for the number yeah, of boxes you have approved. I'm sorry, I might have confused you. You're misunderstanding. I was just trying to get more specifics of the goal writing. I, I was using that as an example. I we're wasn't just, saying that we're was doing, We're doing just really, High, high level, as Jay said, it's not, we're not getting into huge specifics. We just want to throw goals out that we'd like to, to accomplish uh, for next year. So one of my goal is that we update the public arts ordinance. Um, you know, Gary's goal is, uh, one of his goals is this uh, five, um, five sections of town uh, goal. So, you know, Maybe your goal is to uh, restore the mural at JLJ. So we're just coming up with a, a not huge specifics. So, okay. yeah. dreams. Okay, I get it. And and Chandra, just to, for, for clarity, um, in this matrix, it does have another portion. It says list any process improvements that would help implement the priorities. Okay. That's well, it. Improving lines of communication with council, improving how work gets done, and developing new procedures. So I think that's the portion where we can say, we you know, if Tracy's point about the new, uh, the the new rules we need to process of, of you know the the arts commission can approve certain amount or proceed with certain amounts of money. We don't need to go to the city council each time, and if painting your boxes are and and the other thing is if we do go to a district based thing, whether it be your boxes or uh, murals. A city council member represents that district. So they're going to then have a connection to that piece of work within that district. And I think that's a big difference now that we are a district based city council. Okay. Does that make sense? It does make sense. But I don't think what I'm saying everyone's understanding, but it's okay. Well, I get it. I, I understand. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Does anyone else want to throw anything out or do we want to email and consolidate and then discuss at the next next Thursday? 
I say yes to email and consolidate and move on. Do a consensus on that? Yes. I think it's late and, uh, and we should continue uh, to next week. So, um, so we're gonna continue our um, item G1, three, four, and six to next Thursday. And then do we have any report from Jay? Uh, no report, thank you. So if everybody is amenable, we, um, we can continue our meeting until next week. So can I have a, does someone want to do a motion to adjourn? I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn this meeting of the Public Arts Commission to a special meeting to be held Thursday, September the 23rd at 5.30 by teleconference. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you all very, very much. And uh, once we work through these things, then we'll get a lot of stuff. Bye, everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Take care. Thanks for everybody's patience.